So do you agree to have this interview put up on all social media platforms? Yeah, sure. <laughs> I do. Okay, um, literally there's no pressure on your host bank on bug. And we got a special guest. Go ahead and introduce yourself. Hey, so I'm Lauren Danielle, also known as the Kumba Empress. Okay, so um I guess tell everybody where you originally from. I am from South Carolina, a small little town called Monk's Corner, South Carolina. And like, what was like the thing that was like, I got to get out of here? Um, well, <laughs> it's funny because it actually um, came about from a healing um, aspect for me. Um, you, uh, you ever hear that saying, change, change, uh, change your life. No, wait, change your mind, change your life. And so that's literally what I had to do. I was going through a lot of stuff in 2019 and pretty much I had to make a decision. Like, was I gonna continue to let my life force energy being drained out of me? Or was I gonna move and, and, and pray for a better life for myself um, after dealing with the unknown illness for like a year and a half? And just being triggered by tra childhood trauma, going through stress and anxiety and depression from divorce and I chose life. So was your ex-husband, like he was draining your life force? Well, no, it was more, so we separated. So this was just once I was home, in, I moved back home in 2019. And so during that time, it was just the stress of, and, and um, shame of divorce. So all of that was, you know, on, on me, but then also an unknown illness. So that's what was, all those components was draining me, basically. Okay. So like, are you better now or? Oh yeah, way better. <laughs> the glow up is real. So uh, th this was three years ago. So, you know, I'm still, I mean, I feel like healing is a continuous journey. So, you know, there's always things that we continue to work on, you know, as we, you know, go through life. So, but yeah, much better. <laughs> so, sure. so what would you say like, um, is it, do you feel like it was your fault or was it like the guy's fault for like the separation? Um, I wouldn't say, I would say it was both of our faults. I feel like, I believe that we all should take responsibility for things. Um, I feel like a lot of times we don't have like examples of, you know, how to cohabitate with someone and you know, communication is like that main thing that a lot of people um, miss. And so, you know, I feel like the communication was the barrier. And we both, we communicated, but it wasn't enough for us to understand. But then I also believe that things happen for a reason. If I didn't go through this, that time period of my life, I wouldn't be who this person I am today. So. So if you could, if you was talking to God and, and um, you can tell him to like, Give, give you three things in a man, like what would you ask him to put them three things that need to be in this man for you, you know, for it to work in a relationship? Um, definitely. Well, I just feel like just being in harmony with your mind, body, and spirit. Cause I feel like when you have those three things, then everything else will flow as it should. Um, so, you know, being able to use your mind and thoughts and know that you can create your reality, that you can communicate effectively, being in tune with your your body, being healthy, making sure you're taking care of yourself. When you take care of yourself, you can take better care of others. And the spiritual component, just being able to be in tune with your spirit and um, yeah, just being in union with someone else, you know, and that open communication and being in touch with the emotions. I feel like a lot of men don't like to be in their emotions, you know? So that's the other thing, too. Because when you do women say you act like a bitch, like if you all in your feelings too much. I don't believe that, though. <laughs> like, I feel like you can uh, communicate effectively and you can be emotional. Like, for example, I've never, I've never uh, seen my ex-husband, like, cry, like, ever. And we were together for, like, five years. There were moments where there could be a tear that was shed, but not necessarily have to, having to be a full blown cry, you know, like, but if that was to happen, that's okay. 
you know, like, but I feel like that's what's missing a lot of times is people feel like you, men, some men feel like they can't be in tune with their emotions. So, um, did you grow up both of your parents? I did. Yeah, they both um, were in the home, um, but they were together, but not together, if that makes sense. <laughs> so, it was cool, they just weren't like in a relationship? Yeah, like, it wasn't the ideal um, example of a marriage, you know? So... Yes, they, you know, made sure we had food on the table, clothing on our back, but, you know, I didn't grow up seeing, like, the emotions, the love, and the support. All I saw was the money, the bills being paid, and making sure we're, you know, being taken care of. But individually, they were able to provide that. But as far as, like, relationship, we weren't able to, I wasn't able to see that. So, um, you feel like that affected you any? I think so. I feel like things can get passed down um, for sure, but I also believe we all have the ability to change the narrative. And so my way of changing the narrative, like, yes, it, it may have been a repetitive thing that was passed down, but my thing was, like, my mom and my dad stayed married for almost 30 years. And instead of me repeating that generational curse if i'm in a situation that i know is not for my best and highest good i'm not staying for 30 years so that's when i made that decision like okay this is the i have to this is my purpose to break this generational curse whether it was going to work or not i made the decision not to you know continue on that no, it wasn't serving my best in high school. Oh, so you feel like it's a curse just to keep your family together? No, you. but I'm not saying it's a curse. I'm saying if you staying in a situation where you know it's not for you, I don't believe in that. I don't because I feel like when you are like forcing yourself to stay in a situation that you know isn't serving your best and highest good, that's why you see so many people dying from heart attacks and all these diseases, disease, uh, diseases and stuff because your body is at dis-ease. You're taking on all these things and it's causing you to be sick and ill. So a lot of times, you know, people get sick. And I'm, you know, I don't want to sacrifice that self, you know, for myself, you know what I'm saying? So I believe in making things work but you can't force anything to work. That's my opinion. Okay, that's yeah. So, um, what's your relationship with your dad? Y'all close or y'all hard to talk? Um, it's definitely a relationship that is continuing to develop, um, for sure. Um, we did not have, we don't have a close knit relationship, um, but it's something you know, that's going to just continue to grow and continue to work on. And, you know, I know if I need him for anything, you know, he got me. So, yeah. So you feel like you truly been loved by, like, a man in your life? Um, no. <laughs> not just yet. Not not from, like, you mean, if you mean a, from a romantic level. Like, yeah, to a certain extent. But uh, I feel like if you you know, really love someone, you want to do, you know, your very best to make things work the way that they should, so. So, uh, would you, okay, like, sometimes, like, when you get with somebody, it's like, when you want the person more than you, the person who didn't, ain't really being, the, you know what I'm saying, it's like, see, I'm, I'm missing my train of thought, so the person who really don't want you, they not really gonna work hard at being with you, because it's like, you kind of like an option. Mm. So was you like the chaser or like was he chasing you? You mean like after the fact? Like I mean before y'all got, before y'all mm -hmm. got together, like was you chasing him or he chased you to get you? Um, no, I think it was like pretty much mutual. Um, for the most part, I think I was more so interested in him at first than he was to the, to me. Um, but I mean, after so you fell in love first. Yeah, <laughs> I guess you could say that. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, my, fo my folks still together. My mom used to tell me, like, I always make her fall in love first. Mm hmm 
And she said it's usually gonna be one that's gonna work harder to keep it together. Right. So, right. That's true. Okay, um, I guess the most traumatic experience um you had as a child. Most traumatic experience. Hmm. Well, <laughs> Um, it's funny because I didn't realize this was a trauma uh, experience for me until recently. Um, but I used to do uh, ballet when I was younger. And uh, I can remember um, being in a ballet class. I think I was like the token black girl because I'm from a small country town. And um, I think I was the token black girl in the class. And... Uh, I remember I had to go up to the bathroom really bad. And I was like, why? And I, I was afraid to ask the teacher to go to the bathroom. And so I ended up peeing on myself in the middle of the class. And I can remember, I could see the teacher plain as day. She like got mad at me and she like grabbed me and like took me to the bathroom. And I didn't know why, like I didn't realize that it affected me until like I was just thinking about it couple of like actually like last year sometime and I was like hmm I wonder why I was so afraid to ask this woman to use the bathroom so I'm thinking like it was some type of like you know um covert racism that was happening because like I said I was like the only black girl and I'm just like I just remember being so afraid to ask her you know to go to the bathroom so I'm just like you know I would think that was something, and it was something that, and I know it was that, it was triggering and a trauma experience for me, because even when I thought about it as an adult all these years later, it, it made me cry. So it ignited something from in my inner child, like, yeah, that happened to you, and yeah, it was deep, and it just came back up, you know? So I would say that's just one of them. I'm pretty sure there's others, but that's the one that came on top of my head. Okay, um, have you ever had to like check your parents for talking to you like a child when you was an adult? Um, yeah, <laughs> me and my mom definitely, uh, you know, have those experiences where, you know, we, we will, you know, get into that and I'm just like, you know, but I also um, have full respect, you know, as well, so. Yeah, but it's not like a full blown argument though. Like, you know, I I'm very close with like a lot of my family, so like, even if I disagree with something, I may be irritated, but I'm not gonna like not talk to somebody. You know. I mean, it's a polite way. I feel like as long as you don't cuss for years, just be like, hey, you can't talk to me like that. I'm grown. Now. Yeah. Mhm. Mm usually they'll they'll stop. Okay, what do you feel like? Um. A pain that like matured you. You said, wait, what's the question? Something painful that made you like mature fast. Um, I mean, I would say getting married and, and divorce. Yeah. Did you do it again? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Because I know. You know what I want. I know communication is important. I have the lessons that was learned, you know, from the previous. So, yeah. So yeah, I would. Okay. Um. Last time you were so mad you cried, and the last time you were so mad you uh, snapped. Um. <laughs> last time. I, well, I cried a lot. <laughs> I'm a. I'm a uh, Pisces, so like I'm a water bag. Is that uh, so? I mean, well, cry when I was upset. Um, hmm. Dang, what was that? I was. I can't think of a of, of a recent time I cried when I was like upset. Like, but I've been like, you know, overwhelmed or stressed. Then yes, I'm gonna cry. I cried today, matter of fact. <laughs> so, Would you tell me about something? No, like just feeling overwhelmed and wanting, you know, business to be the way I want it to be. Um, so you know, just feeling overwhelmed 
And yeah, so I cried today. <laughs> like I said, I cried all the time. But, you know, and it could be a variety of things. It could be happy tears. It could be frustrated tears. It could be mad tears. But um, I would say that would be, you know, then. And then last my snap. I don't really snap like that. But, like, one time I got really, I, I have a little cousin that is like my, he's like my son. I call him my son because I've been with him since he was like a baby. And... You know, when children act like they're grown, but then they're not really grown. And then when you ask them to, like, do stuff and they don't do it, you got to keep repeating yourself. And I was already frustrated at some other things that was going on. And, like, yeah, I had to let him have it. But other than that, I don't really step on the lot. <laughs> okay. Um, so what's a, what's a toxic behavior, like, you feel like you may need to uh, unlearn? Toxic behavior. Hmm. Toxic behavior. I don't know. That's a um good one. Uh, I would say probably just working too much and not really like giving my giving uh family and friends like enough like attention and, and love or whatever. So um just really focusing in and zoning in, which I think that's important. But I also think it's important to like, you know, be around family and friends, you know, from time to time and get out of work mode and, you know, all that. So, so you know, I guess now the new movement is basically, it's like my career over family. So is that kind of how you are now? Like your career is more important than like building a family? No, I mean, I'm... I want to do both simultaneously, <laughs> but I mean, at the moment, business is like taking the forefront, but like, I feel like you can do, I think you can do both at the same time. As long as the person, if you're talking about relationship wise, as long as the person understands, you know, that this is what you're doing, this is what they're doing, we're building, then I think it can work. So I, I really am open to, you know, both for sure. Okay, and um, <laughs> okay, I, um, I guess I go with this. I never thought my friend would, I guess, finish that. Mm. I never thought my friend would. Hmm. That's a good one. Oh, no, I have great friends. <laughs> um,. Well, I can remember a friend. I never thought my friend would discredit me wanting to be a yoga instructor as like my career path. Like they thought it was a joke. So, yeah. You see a friend with it now? Yeah, but it's not like close friends, like so. But it's still a friend, but I just I just didn't think that would like come out of somebody's mouth, you know. So So if your if your I guess your partner is like don't believe in your dream, you feel like that's a deal worker. Oh hell yeah. Like that's it. <laughs> like you <laughs> like you might as well don't even <laughs> like come over here. Uh uh. Yeah, nah. Like if not saying something wrong with a nine to five and everything, but if you can have that, but if you you feel, cause it may not be for everybody, but like, if you just about to come in here like, oh no, you just need a nine to five and you know, like, this is not gonna work, then they might as well don't even come this way. Cause yeah, that's not my life <laughs> to do that. Okay, it's a quote, they say, sometimes you have to make decisions that uh, break your heart, but give um, your soul peace. I guess something, I guess besides your marriage, like a situation that kind of, Reminds you of that quote. Something that, say that one more time. Sometimes you have to make decisions that break your heart but give your um, soul peace. Um, sometimes you gotta pull. I mean, I would say like how I'm in transitions now. Like I'm, you know, working, you know, uh, uh, part-time. And I fully want to work on my vision, my business. So 
that's what lights my soul on fire, you know? Um, so it kind of breaks my heart that I have to kind of do this temporarily, you know, until things get to where, you know, I want it to be. Do you feel like, like love kind of like throws you off your vision a little bit? Uh, no, I don't think so. I just think as long as like there's accountability and, you know, uh, for both parties, but no, I think it could actually, um, fill it up even more. Okay, um, something you was quiet about, but you had a lot to say that you want to say. Something I was quiet a lot about. Mm. I can't think of anything. I mean, I've been quiet about relationships and, you know, um, healing on both parties. Um, and why are you in it, you saying? Huh? Like, why are you in it? No, just in general. Like, I feel like that's the that's the barrier between black women and black men is that there's a lot of people that have not done healing work. So, I've been quiet about it, but I have tons to say about it. I actually want to have an actual event surrounding, um, you know, the coming together of that dynamic. So... I do have a lot to say on that. But I just don't talk about it as much because I'm, you know, focusing more on my business right now. But yeah, I definitely want to build a platform strictly on that. Okay, what's the aspect of it that you want to talk about that's haven't been talked about? Um, I mean again, like the internal work, the inner child healing that a lot of people have have not done. Um, and it's very clear because um, you can see it. You can see it when people are triggered by certain things and their hurt little child comes out. Give me an example. Like, like people that's been bullied as children um, and somebody may say something to them and then they just go off like crazy. Like, like damn near like... <laughs> you know, fighting on the internet type deal. Because somebody triggered something in them that happened to them as a child and they did not fully address it. That little hurt child is still in there, still feeling like they have to defend for themselves, you know, still feeling like the all about out, and it's spilling over into our relationships. So that, that happened to you? Um, it could be an aspect that happened to me, but I'm saying that is, I feel like a lot of, I've been doing inner child work, but I'm saying a lot of people do not do inner child work. So, and I feel like that's what I have a lot to talk about is that is the core of why a lot of, well, one of the things, communication is another big thing too, but inner child stuff is one of the, you know, uh, main reasons why we have challenges and you know like even not even just inner child just generational stuff that continues to pass down that we don't address well sometimes with men it can just be like a little disrespect can make you like go off you get what i'm saying like if somebody doing it on purpose yeah i get it but it's kind of like how can you be more what's the word uh how can you respond more in a way that you're not like a little child, like responding? How can you respond with more purpose behind what you're saying? I'm saying, what's what's the immature response like? Just like you're yelling and like you like just sounding like literally sounding like a little boy. Like there's a way to address things without having to like go off like. Type of deal. Like snapping, basically. Yeah, like I think it's there's ways to communicate things, but you okay. don't have to go off. Yeah, that's like, a little weird. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And I've seen it several times. So, like, that's just something I feel like can be like worked on. It's just inner child healing, also just being in touch with our emotions and all that. So, but I, I mean, I don't really like people like that because it's like. 
I be feeling like they don't go off on who they supposed to go off. It's somebody they might see as weaker. Like, if right. you really like it, you should be going off on your supervisors, your co-workers, your No, mom. I agree. If yeah. you really like it, you get what I'm saying? But most people are not. They just pick and choose who mm -hmm. I'm going to just That's true. be a bully to. Right. Okay, um... Okay, what what keeps you like excited to like wake up every day, bro? What keeps me excited? Knowing that and trusting that I'm getting closer and closer to my dream. Living the life that I wanna live. Mm. Doing the things I wanna do, helping the people I wanna help. Being in my purpose work. So waking up every day to that is encouraging so what's so i mean i guess a fulfilling life for you would be just like basically like making your business like do good yeah and just helping people traveling the world seeing the world just the time freedom time freedom so would it feel fulfilled like if you get all that business stuff and you never get like a, a family like a husband and a child no, we getting all that. <laughs> that's that's a package. <laughs> they ain't gonna separate it. That's a package deal right there. <laughs> like we done talked about that earlier. We said we will, we can do both at the same time. <laughs> so that's <Sure>. it. <laughs> okay, so um, I was just outside and Kay was asking me. She said, basically, is it whole behavior? Like if if you get mad with somebody who. Who cheating on you and you go cheat? Like, is that like being a hoe? If what now? If the person basically, if if you with somebody and you get mad because they cheating and you go cheat. Um. Oh, that's not a question for me because I wouldn't do that. Oh, <laughs> I'm cheated? sorry. No, <laughs> like I would not do that. So I don't feel like what? Because what's the point of like? retaliating back like that. You know what I'm saying? Like, just break up with the person. Some women say they say it make them feel good. No. Well, they do it to make them feel good, but when they do it, it's like, it's not really a good feeling. Like, you really hurting yourself more. Right, like, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, I don't I don't play with my energy like that. <laughs> so, that definitely would not be my cup of tea <laughs> to do something like that. I, that's, I mean, that's kind of, I mean, every woman say, every woman I meet say that on cheat. I never met a woman who say they cheat, like, so it's kind of. <laughs> I mean, men don't, I mean, I don't know a lot of men that say they, that they cheat, but. Oh, you guys say it. Like, are you heard, I mean, I may have heard like a few, but most men are not upfront about that. <laughs> like, they're not. So, um, would you do polygamy? No. <laughs> I wouldn't. I'm too, um, I'm, I, I've always been a monogamous person, and whoever I'm with, you know, um, that's who I'm with. So, yeah, that's definitely a no. <laughs> okay, I guess tell me about, like, your business and, like, um, how can people get in touch with you and donate and all that kind of stuff? Oh, uh, sure, yeah. So, I have a mobile holistic wellness brand called Soul Divine. And um, focus on all things holistic wellness for the mind, body, soul, helping people to um, uh, reach the best versions of, of themselves. And uh, currently, one of my most requested service is Hula Hula Fitness, and which is mind, body, spirit, fitness using a hula hoop. And so basically, that came to me. Um, during that time in 2019 where I was, you know, in those, that low state, that low vibration and pretty much I was able to heal myself through hula hooping. And so that is the core of my brand. And right now I'm on a hula hoop healing tour and I go from city to city um, offering free hula hoop fun to people um, so that they can experience what I've experienced. Um, it's just one of those things that you have to experience, you know, it's not like people think like hula hoop and what? But it's one of those things you literally just have to experience. Men, women, children, race, don't matter, all sizes. 
anybody can, you know, experience that healing joy of hula hooping. And um, yeah, and so the tour, I'm definitely looking for support there and getting sponsorships and donations towards the tour. And um, I can be connected on all platforms at Soul Divine Vibes. That's S O U L D I V I N E V I B E S. Soul Divine Vibes, and I have a link in my bio that has my campaign in there where you can learn more about the tour and how you can support, and yeah. So tell me, so the yoga instructor, like, you do that as work or is it something you trying to do? Uh, yeah, so that's how I started my brand, like, five years ago. It was on yoga, and yoga was, my first healing journey ever was through yoga. Um, and when I saw the benefits of yoga and how it helped me, then that's when I was like, oh, I can, I want to teach this to people. And that's when I got certified to teach yoga. Okay. So, um, so any other like business you do, like any, you know, like your side hustles, like what, what else you do? Like? Um, so I love content creation as well. So I'm a social media manager. Um, for two uh, brands here in Atlanta and for my own brand, but then I also love to con create content for other businesses, um, other entrepreneurs, and I've always loved photography, videography, and so I love to just capture, you know, the essence of people and, you know, what their purpose works are as well, so. Yeah. How did you get into the, the social media manager? Um, how did? I mean, honestly, it just was one of those things where I, I needed just funds coming in. But then, you know, I just started, I was like, oh, well, I do this on my own. So let me just help another brand, you know, build their presence up. I guess um, we're going to try to get deeper into the um, the hula hoop. So as far as like um, hula hoop, like what would you say, like, um, I guess give me something a, a situation you was in and, and it like hula hoop kind of like helped you through the situation? Oh, <laughs> so it's so many different ways. Um, definitely um, when I'm frustrated about something, um, if I'm feeling anxiety, um, hula hooping keeps me grounded, calms me down. Um, that's one. And definitely, you know, working out, of course. Like when I just want to like continue to improve my health daily, I focus on hula hooping. Um, it definitely um, increases like your um, confidence as well. So if I'm not feeling as confident about something, you know, I'll hula hoop, and it also increases your sensuality. So yeah. As far as like I don't know. <laughs> So, I mean, when you're hooping, it's a, it's a whole hip opener as well. So, like, it just brings out the divine feminine more in women. Like, I was very, um, what's the word, meek and mild. <laughs> so, like, hula hooping definitely brought out the, you know, woman, woman in me. Um, so, like, people that know me, even, like, a couple years ago, they're like, oh, you're not the same person. Like, so... Give me an example, like. Um, just the way you your energy is around, like my energy is around people. Like you just feel the divine feminine, the sensual side. Like you can feel that. But before I was very old lady ish, <laughs> so like, you know, it just was not the same type of energy. So it definitely boosts the confidence and in, in the sensuality within, you know, women. So is hula hoop like is is it like better than a normal exercise somebody will be doing right now? Um, I would say it's like low impact. I mean, I know there's so many different types of working out, but um, hula hooping is low impact, but you still can have the same benefits um, as working out um, with weights or cardio. It is cardio, you know. Um, I've also gained healthy weight through hula hooping. Um, you know, just hooping right, uh, doing those moves where I'm dropping down, working my hips, and um, also eating the right foods, thinking the right thoughts, and I've gained like a healthy 25 pounds. Like I've been an unhealthy weight before, but I was able to gain this weight back, but in a healthy way through hula hooping. So you saying you was like fat or you was like skinny? Um, I've been both sides. So 
when I was married, um, I was an unhealthy 145. Like, that's the heaviest I've ever been in my entire life. 145 and, is heavy? Yeah, for me. If I show you <laughs> pictures of me when I was 145, like, I had, like, neck rolls. I had I a little jelly. I want to see it. I wish I had something, <laughs> like, right here where I can show you. Like, I was legit, like, yeah, I was, I was 145. And, you know, like, some people would say, like, oh, there was nothing wrong with you, but... It was unhealthy weight, so yes, it is so wrong. <laughs> like you know, what I'm saying I don't want no neck rolls and I don't want no belly hanging over. You know what I'm saying? So um, then after when I got had my unknown illness, I okay, lost uh, a lot of weight. When you say that, is it unknown or you just don't want to say it? No, it was really an unknown illness. Unknown. Illness. Like the doctors, nobody knew what was wrong with me. So I mean, what was like the symptoms? Like what was going um, on? so. Well, I'll tell you what what I what procedure I had done. So basically, I had the mercury fillings removed from my teeth, and so because I like heard through people not doing my research that you know having mercury in your mouth was not healthy for you, but I didn't do my research on the process. So the process was done correctly, but what I didn't know is that your teeth are connected to various parts of your body. It controls various parts of your body and, and you know people don't know a lot of people don't know that so I had like five of them I think removed at one time and um, at first I thought I had mercury poisoning but I had tests done and I did not have mercury poisoning because the, the procedure was done uh, correctly and basically whatever those teeth those teeth that were removed it messed with my thyroid I was already actually having thyroid issues. It made it worse. Um, I was dizzy 24-7, very low energy to the point where, like, towards the end of my journey, like, I couldn't even drive like that. Um, I gained, I lost all that weight. Um, I would say that, and I had even digestive issues. I wasn't, like, going to the bathroom like that. So it had me messed up. And then, like, later on, um, I would say about the year mark, I started having suicidal thoughts. So it literally messed with me mentally, physically, and spiritually. Um, so that's what I mean by unknown illness. And the doctors did not know what was wrong with me. Yeah. So how many how many doctors you got checked by? Um, a good bit, probably at least over two, three. Um, and then nobody had the answers, you know. Um, like I said, it wasn't the mercury. I didn't. It didn't hit me until later. Like, oh, it was because you removed parts of your teeth that you should. You know, you shouldn't have done that process. Or I want to say I shouldn't have done the process. I probably should have did more research and not done so many at one time. And I'm already a sensitive person, so because I did so many at one time, it really um, messed me up really bad. So, um, yeah. So. So, um, yeah, why did you never have kids? Like, um, did you, did you didn't want them? I did. I do. I still want children. <laughs> uh, um, but I also was not about to have children in a place or environment where I wasn't happy, you know? So I know when I first got, like, as soon as I got married, I wanted to have a child, but my ex did not want children. He already had a daughter. So, like, he didn't want to have children right away. But then, after a while, as, you know, things progressed, then I was like, oh, I'm not about to have a child because I'm not about to be stuck in, not stuck, but stuck in this situation that I know I'm not about to be in for long. So, I just made that decision, like, no, nah, that's not going to happen right now. So, what, you got on the shot or something? No, we just never, <laughs> we just didn't do that. We just made sure that it was just... I think I was on like the you know birth control for a little bit, but after a while, like I didn't want to be on that because I don't I don't personally like medicine. Um, but um, yeah, so after a while, I got off and then we just took precautions, so that did not happen. And yeah, so no, but I'm still open to you know having children. I'm not one of those people that don't that be like, oh my god, I'm getting close to forty. 
I need to have children. Like, I'm not one. Of, like, I feel like if I'm 40 and I'm having my first child, I'm 40 and having my first child. So do you go get checked to see if you good to have them? Um, no, I, I mean, I just have this strong belief in, in, in you know, knowing that I can and that I will. So. You look like this girl I went to um, high school with. Really? <laughs> yeah. I ain't seen her in years, though. She didn't, she didn't like me either, but <laughs> it was just like. What is it about me? It's like your, whole, like your face. Like, My face, oh. Yeah. You look just like Laquisha Taylor. <laughs> hey, Laquisha. <laughs> That's yeah, funny. Man, yeah. Okay, so um, any more questions that um, like I guess the audience should know, or somebody who really interested in hula hooping, like they should know about it. Um, uh, definitely, I would just say it's just something that you just have to experience. Um, you know, I could talk about it all day long and. But it's just literally something you have to experience. If you, if you're, if it's if it's somebody's going through something and they literally don't have any answers or they don't feel like things are looking up for them, just add a hula hoop to your life. It'll change your life. So for depression, so it took you out of depression, like just hula hoop. Mhm. Mm I mean, if you think about it, you literally can't hula hoop and be sad you can't be mad you know what i'm saying it it emits immediately a feeling of joy and happiness so um, i think i talked about it earlier this ease cannot live in a happy or you know a flourishing environment so if you continuously um dedicating to making yourself feel good and be happy no matter what is going on around you it can definitely help. You don't That's, feel like a, a woman's test could do the same thing? I mean, yeah, that too. But I'm saying if 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 people are looking for results on in, you know, um if people are looking for change, that's what I'm saying. This is a, a tool, an avenue for change because I feel like I run into a lot of people that's, you know, going through so many things and I'm literally sharing with the world what help me you know through that time period um and just making sure that you're honoring you that's the other thing too like making sure you're honoring yourself and so you know by me saying no to what i did not want and saying yes to what i do want and doing whatever it took i didn't know this was gonna help me <laughs> i didn't honestly i was literally at the I was literally at the I don't know what else to do moment. And I came across hula hooping and I just saw how um, this woman, she was so like happy and free. And I was like, I don't know if it's gonna work for me, but I'm just gonna give it a shot. What else I'm, what is, what, what can I lose at this point? And so literally the first day I got my hula hoop, um, I was like very, and it's all on video. Um, I was like very stiff. I was like, oh, I can't do this. And then next thing you know, I bumped the wall with my hula hoop and I just started dancing out of nowhere. And I literally danced my way into my healer. You know, I dedicated at least like five minutes every day to hula hooping. And slowly but surely, I was able to heal myself. That it was this, the combination of this and also taking myself out of a space where I wasn't happy. So like physically I had to move to Atlanta. And when I did, like no lie, like two weeks later I started to feel better. Okay, so I'm just wondering, like shit, a married couple like have like five minutes or ten minutes a day to where they dedicate something that they do to like make it better. Oh yeah, absolutely. And what would you suggest that be like? I mean <laughs> Let me stop. <laughs> it don't gotta be like hula hooping, but yeah. I mean, it could be a variety of things. I just think that is something that you you gotta make time for. Like, just uh, you have to have. First of all, it needs to be you time and then us time. That's what I think. So, like doing something that you enjoy doing, and then doing something y'all enjoy doing together. 
And I know life is busy, but we have to like make time. So what's the sufficient amount of times a guy should ask you for, like? I mean, but if we your time. I don't know. It just depends on like on what type of relationship or what type of like. like okay, let's just say business. we was, let, let's say we was dating, right? And I'd be like, I want to see you like twice a week, and like we got like three hour dates or something. Is that too much, or you wouldn't have time for it? I mean, I don't, I can't answer that because it's like it's like you. I mean, I guess I have to know what what how my life is going to be currently. You know what I'm saying? Like. What I want my life to look like is me traveling a lot. Okay. So, not to say not being home, like home never or whatever, but like, if we come to the agreement that this is our time and we're going to meet two times a week or whatever the case may be, then yeah. So, but I think it just really depends on what type of life you're living. But I'm open, I love to spend time with the person I'm with. So, we gonna make time, you know what I'm saying? And also we gonna get the bag too. So we doing both. That's so, so the traveling is still gonna be you gonna be doing it when you have kids? Or is it yeah. all right stuff? Yeah, traveling. Not saying you gotta travel twenty four seven, but I mean like right now I'm doing a hula hoop tour. I mean I'm going I mean initially I was gonna be going to two cities every month. Um oh, that ain't bad. Just a weekend, I guess. Yeah, a weekend, but that's what two up uh, two open weekends, really. I mean, hell, I could do all the weekends I would, <laughs> but originally it was two weekends. Now it's once a month. But if I was dating somebody, like you know, I would want the person to come with me if they could, you know. That's what's so yeah, I just feel like it, like I said earlier, they have to understand that this is what it is you know what i'm saying and you know yeah i'm busy but I, like i said i also people i always feel like people make time for things they want That's what's up. so yeah and what does these like shells mean on you um yeah. actually it's just and so these are carbon shells um they originate in africa um from what I read and understand, they represent abundance. Um, and I don't know, one day it just came, I made, cre I, so um, outside of, I, I create, I'm a creator too. So I made waist beads, um, I um, would, and I make hula hoops as well, but like um, the waist beads, I used to do them heavily. And I don't know, some just said, make a headpiece. And, I made a headpiece and I call this my Empress Halo. So it's just a signature look of mine. Okay, mm -hmm. But it don't mean that. It just represents the essence of who who the Hula Empress is. Does like the dreads like mean anything or you just like the look? No, just like the look. Just natural. I'm a natural girl. I actually have a short haircut. Um, but I just wanted to switch it up for 2023 and got some Oh, so it's fake? Yeah. <laughs> but thanks for thinking it's real. <laughs> I used to have locks, but they fell out. So I had to start over. I mean, I got to start over. What, you going to put, put some shit bald? Uh, I mean, it's not bald, but I have, like, my hair is, like, probably this high. Yeah. Okay, well, I guess we're going to wrap it up, man. <laughs> I appreciate you coming. And I guess you didn't mind staying, so I guess you kind of like the energy, so we ain't run out the door. <laughs> <laughs> no. Okay, literally, it's no pressure. I'm your host, Bang a Bug, and we got the hula hoop Empress, and she wants to show everyone about the, the hula hoop, so talk to them. All right, y'all. So I'm going to share my collapsible hula hoop. Um, I call this my magic trick, so y'all ready? Bam. Bam. That's my hula trick. Okay, and um, as I shared earlier, that uh, hula hooping, hula healing is what I like to call it, um, helped me in my journey. Um, it helped me through stress, anxiety, depression, uh, unknown illness, and 
now I share this healing love with others. So just wanted to show y'all what the hula hoop do and how you throw it around your waist. And in the process, I did become a professional hula hoop dancer. So through my healing births, also this other journey, you know, for myself. So, and we're going to see if Bug won't join us. <laughs> I don't have a hula hoop. <laughs> Okay. There you go. <laughs> That's it right there. See? But you, but you gotta just like move like more. That's it. But for the most part, you got it. That was lit. I'm See? a rookie. <laughs> All right, um, <laughs> literally, it's no pressure, man. I guess we gonna see y'all in a minute. And we out, man. Peace.